thank you, Jones. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, they can hear me in China, Danny. <laughs> you made me spill my water, and I just got this jacket back. We'll let the church decide. Glasses number one. Or glasses number two. Number one. 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 Two. 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 We got one. Two. 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 Sold to the American. I'm still way too loud. We'll work on that. One. Okay, here we go. Moms take no prisoners. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out here. Or, lest I offend, Happy Birthing Person's Day. Now, perhaps we chuckle or gruff at that. But seriously, what an absolute assault that is on the importance of not only mothers, but most especially that is an assault to your ears for godly mothers out here. Like I preached last Mother's Day in here. Recently I saw the picture of a pregnant woman and her husband alongside of her. And a friend asked the pregnant woman, have you found out what the baby's sex is yet? And the pregnant woman responded, we're leaving that up to the child's kindergarten teacher. <laughs> really? Don't make me come down there. Mothers, may I suggest another way? And may I suggest a better way than that? Now, I want to read some memories of my mother which I wanted to read at her memorial service three months ago when she passed, which I never got the chance to. So, if I can get through this. Well, you guys don't want me to buy something from Sermon Central, do you? I just share with you from my heart. It does work better that way, doesn't it? And who would have known that on this day I would get another chance? So with that in mind, this is for you, Mom. Now keep in mind, I'm reading now as if this was my mother's memorial, okay? I am Paul, son number three, known to most people as Pastor Paul. I just want to share a few words about God, about his son, Jesus Christ, and about my mother, Patricia Whiting. Where to start? Perhaps the verses I read when I was ordained with my father beside me and my brother, Brian. Proverbs 17, 25. It says, a foolish son is a grief to his father and bitterness to her who bore him. Am I the only son that can relate to that? I doubt it. But we're talking about me, fortunately. That sure described me for more years than I care to remember that described me. 
But then again, thank God for Proverbs 22, 6, which reads, Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, right? You've been praying that one, haven't you? Right, right, we don't give up. When he's old, he will not depart from it, the word says. Now, personally, I owe, fleshly speaking, I owe all of that to my mother. And speaking for my family, the Esposito family, we all do. My mother loved the Lord. She loved attending church where we were growing up. She was not just a Sunday morning Christian, but she seemed to go to all the events whenever the church doors were open. She loved Calvary Episcopal Church in Summit, New Jersey, where we all grew up. And her insisting that all four of us go to church changed my life. Even though I never recognized it at the time, And I encourage all of you moms to do likewise. Now, 50 years later, I'll never forget. I learned in seminary that more people get saved in Sunday school than they do in the church service. Luann, Carol, Joan, Jean, Karen... I can remember the name of my Sunday school teacher from when I was nine years old, 51 years ago. Mark. This led me to love the Lord like my mother before me. In turn, I joined the choir at Calvary Episcopal. You heard of boy George? I was boy Paul. <laughs> the choir boy. Despite all of the laughs from all of the other boys. Back in the day after school during the week when all the other kids went to the parks to play, I instead went to church. I didn't realize it at the time, but God's held me in his grip all of these years. I would climb the spiral staircase in this old church. And I would naturally bring something to eat with me. And I would hang around the giant organ pipes at church. Because even at that age, I knew that that was home for this old boy. Now I'm just saying that I'm so grateful for a godly mother and a woman of high esteem and great integrity. I can still taste the ivory soap that used to go down my throat <laughs> and coat my tongue when my language was inappropriate or when I was disrespectful. Seems like the book of Proverbs described my mother a lot. Though I didn't realize it at the time. Really, not until after she was gone. Proverbs 31.25 It says, Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in times to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom. On her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her house. She does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Now I encourage you, keep that up. They will call you blessed eventually. Some women in here know what I'm talking about. Don't give up. Just keep it up. Thank God they didn't make that decision when they saw me all those years ago. And they didn't quit on me. They just kept it up. Remember Proverbs 3.5 is what I spoke in Darren's ear the dad ordained him. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Lord, you are God. I don't understand what I am going through. I don't understand why my children don't walk with you. But I'm giving this to you. Even when I don't understand, especially when I don't understand. Ecclesiastes 11.1 1 says this. It says, cast your bread upon the water and you will find it after many days. Phew. Throw it out there. Like that old fishing lure and that tide is going to bring it on back to you. All in due time. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Solomon writes, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. Now my mother raised three wonderful sons. And then she raised me as well. A miracle in its own right. Miracle in its own right. Let me say a few words about her Lord. Because apart from Him, everything is meaningless without Him. It doesn't matter what you do if you don't share Jesus Christ with your kid, with your son or daughter. All is meaningless without the Son of God. All is meaningless. Now Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, I go to prepare a place for you. See, unlike last week's sermon, where we saw those at the great white throne judgment, remember, it says no place was found for them. Not so for you. He's going to prepare a place for you. You have a place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord Jesus also said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Then he says, do you believe this? All is meaningless if we don't start there. Everything is meaningless without the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. That's one of my favorites. Imagine that. Let's take a few minutes out of this day, this Mother's Day. Imagine that, not dying. Certainly, or possibly, if not you, at least them, these children... No one knows the day or the hour, but I'm willing to put money on that. That the nine-year-olds that are here is the generation, in my opinion, that won't ever die. Now, I don't know when he's coming back. But this whole world can't, go, can't keep on going the way that it is now. You see, once you see him, it's too late. Once you see him, it's too late. Are your kids ready for the return of the Lord Jesus? Imagine that. We think it at that. That's great news that he's going to come back, if not ours in our kids' lifetime. But do your kids know Jesus Christ? The terminal generation, do they know the Lord? 
He's coming back a second time. We read in Hebrews 9.28. He said he's coming back a second time apart from sin. Meaning no one's going to pull on his beard next time he comes back. Not anymore. You're not pulling on his beard. You're not spitting in his eye. He's coming back a second time apart from sin to all of you and me that got a crick in our necks from looking up. Now Darlene has told me not once, she's told me twice. She's raising up her sons to be ministers, she said. Hallelujah, Hallelujah is right. What a great idea. You don't have to be a pastor, but raise them up to be a minister. Maybe they will be pastors. That doesn't surprise me. Lord's put it on my heart to baptize them at nine years old, and that's what we're going to do. What an excellent thing to do, Darlene. Maybe that's why it's so hot in your kitchen. Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Lastly, my favorite promise out of the Bible. It says, to him who overcomes, I will grant, meaning, yes, you. The Lord Jesus says, come on up. To him who overcomes, that is, you got to cross this finish line in faith. To all of you that cross this finish line in faith and don't give up on Jesus Christ. No matter all the adversity that you're under, no matter what you're going through, to every one of you that cross this finish line in faith, I will grant. Have a seat on my throne. Now that's good news. What a great promise that is. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Now that's a promise that my mother is enjoying right now. Because she was an overcomer. My mother was an overcomer. She crossed the finish line in faith. In spite of the adversity, she kept her eyes on Jesus and she crossed the finish line in faith. And for all of you mothers here today and watching on Facebook or YouTube or listening in on the radio, how you raise your son or daughter will forever change their life. Even if it's not you, even if you are not a mother, you know someone who is and you can help them. You can come in alongside and church family, I'm talking to you. You can come in alongside and help someone who is. Help someone who is. 51 years ago, I remember the names of these people that did this with me. I don't remember what I had for dinner last night. But I remember this. I remember these people that made a difference in my life when I was a child. And all the things that my mother did for us. You can and are making a difference today in the life of your child or the life of your grandchild. You're making a difference today. It's the seeds you plant today. They're going to remember when they're 35 years old. You won't see them out here with these fools cursing Israel. It's because they didn't have any godly mother that told them, I will bless those that bless you and I will curse those that curse you. They never had a godly mother to tell them that. You can tell them that. You are required to tell them that. To love what God loves. Hate what God hates. That falls on you guys. You can make a difference today in the life of your child or grandchild. Again, look right here in this church. We got Nathaniel, Giovanni, and Elijah all getting baptized in here next Sunday. 
at nine years old, more or less. These children seeking the Lord at a young age are nurtured and guided along by all of you godly mothers out here making a difference. And again, you church family that comes in alongside to help. You don't have to have a son or a daughter, but you can help those that do. You can help those. So, moms, I encourage you. Stand up and be counted. It's never too late to stand up. It's never too late to stand up and be counted. Whether you're 18 or whether you are 85 years old, it's never too late to stand up and be counted and to make a godly influence on the life of a child around here. Now Joshua said, he said, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the gods your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land that you dwell. But as for me and my house, he says, and I say, and you guys say, as for us and our house, we will serve the Lord. Be the godly mother in your house that your son or your daughter so desperately needs, church. Take no prisoners. The future of your child, <clears throat> the future of your child is shaped by what you do today. And I'm not going to say, oh, only if it's prayer. Prayer is the first down option. It's not prayer when it's time to punt. You pray now on first down, not fourth down, not fourth and 85 on your own one yard line. Pray now when it's first and goal. First, Ecclesiastes 13, 13. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. Really, what else is there other than that, right? Fear God and keep his commandments. Fear God, keep his commandments. Teach that to your kids and you won't see them on CNN. At least if you do, they will remember the things that you have infused into them today. Thank God they didn't give up on me. But like the prodigal son, remember what it says? It says that when he came to his senses, he made it right. Maybe that's a good prayer for those of you with prodigals right now. Pray that God will use his perfect ways and means to have your prodigal son come to his senses. And pray for discernment that you'll know when that time is hit so then you can move in and tell people that God loves them. That's the charge over humanity. I've said it in here for 10 years straight now. That's the charge over humanity is God loves you, wants you to spend eternity with him. Why do people get so angry at that? Here's a few last instructions from the word. Train up a child in a way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. My life is a living testimony of that verse. The Apostle Paul gave these instructions to his young protege, Pastor Timothy. He says, but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you learned them, and that from childhood... You have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now by golly he learned those things from two people. His mother and from his grandmother. He was the pastor of this church in Ephesus. 
He learned it from his mother and from his grandmother. Here's another. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. Or, if you guys don't have a gavel, I mean a, a rod, you're welcome to use this. Hey, you crown him on the head with this. All right, that's going to go out on faith. Now nah, a video's going to get... I'm only, I, I'm only joking. Don't beat up your head, your, your kid with a gavel. However... The rod of correction will drive it far him. But thank God for the rod. I am who I am with the aid of this limp that I have. From the rod which came down on my back. Or I have a twitch due to your switch. Right, Sharon? <laughs> Can anyone relate? Aren't you grateful now for that? Here's another. Proverbs 29, 15 out of the NIV. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom. But a child left undisciplined disgraces his mother. And how, huh? Go to Walmart. Wisdom. Look around today with most of today's youth and you'll find a shortage of wisdom. So let's close with this today. Moms, don't be afraid to be tough with your kids. And teach your kids to love the Lord Teach them how much they need Jesus. And how that without him, without Jesus, heaven is impossible. Without Jesus, heaven is impossible. You can't get in without him. By him, we have access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. He says, I am the way. There's only one way to gain entry into the kingdom of heaven. That's through his son, Jesus Christ. These nine-year-olds know that. These kids are compelled to get baptized. Why? Because they're old enough to know better. They're old enough to know better. They need you. And they need this. Kids used to get whooped all the time when I was a kid. I know someone that went to jail for spanking his child in the mall. But if you're afraid to do that, then, you'll, then, then, then your kid will have his 15 minutes of fame and that'll be on CNN. While they get in here spitting in the eyes, looking to kill all the Jews out here in the world today. I'll sum up all of life, he says. Fear God and keep his commandments, because this is man's all. Start children, again, this is Proverbs 22, 6, from another translation. Start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you in the house. Lord, I thank you for my mother. And we all thank you for our mothers that we've had. Maybe we're brushing away just the, the cobwebs of memories over how our moms loved you and imparted into us this, this righteousness and integrity. We thank you for our mothers. 
Lord, we pray right now. I pray right now. We pray. This church family prays for all of the mothers here in the house here today. Lord, we pray that you would fill all the moms and grandmothers in here with wisdom. I pray that they all would have or receive, if need be, the gift of discernment. Help them to have eyes on the back of their head. Help them to know when they are direly needed somewhere that they know not of. Fill these mothers and influences with wisdom, strength. Help them, help all of us to meet out love and grace and discipline when it's needed. Bless the mothers in this church and beyond. We praise you now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Dwayne? Okay, so I guess we're going to ask all the moms to stand up. Well, our service is done. I'm going to bid everyone goodbye here. Let me read a scripture verse to you here. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you guys back. Uh, Wednesday at 4.30 to make bags. Wednesday night, I will be teaching Sunday school this, I mean, uh, Wednesday night Bible study this week. I'm going to be teaching on the scribes in the Old Testament. My daughter will be here. You guys have a chance to meet her. She's, uh, uh, will be here this afternoon visiting here for a week. So we'd love to see you guys Wednesday, Sunday morning, back as normal. Pastor Darren teaching Sunday school. We're in Mark chapter one and, uh, a whole bunch of baptisms coming up here next week. So, okay, the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It says, Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. What a great promise to moms. Think about it. To him who is able to do exceedingly. Oh, what is a whole lot of adverbs in that verse. To him who is able. Remember, Mark 6.33. Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Put God first with all that you do. That's how you get this prayer answered. When you put God first in your life. Amen. To him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ever ask. Or all we could ever think. According to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And the church family said, Amen. Okay, all moms, come on up front. We have a gift here for all mothers here today. Danny, you can.